Hello everyone. So in today's film I'm going to be creating a look very much inspired by the season. Spring has finally arrived. It was very late this year, certainly here in London and in the UK. Winter definitely had an extension this year. So it is very refreshing to be able to see the trees, the plants and the flowers come back to life. I know for many of my viewers who live in hotter places and more tropical regions, you may not necessarily have the same seasonal pattern. So spring is definitely something that you really notice in places in the world that are a little bit more cold. So it's lovely to be able to see everything come back to life. And I also really like this season because it represents new life, new growth and energy. I would also consider spring a very feminine season. So the look I want to create will use a lot of soft pink tones. I think pink is a marvellous colour. Pink is definitely a colour that I associate with spring, summer, autumn and winter. Pink is definitely a colour that I think can work on absolutely everyone, whether it be in the context of eyeshadow, of eyeliner, blusher or lipstick. It just has to be the right kind of pink, the right tone of pink and the right formulation and opacity and of course suiting to your own skin tone as well as your own undertones. So pink is very much one of those colours that can work very very widely irrespective of ethnicity, of eye colour, of eye shape, whatever factor be it. So the look I'm going to create is going to have soft pinks. It's going to be very feminine and soft, but still have great definition. So it'll be quite pretty and soft and quite girly. Now I have already gone in and prepped and primed my skin with some of Embryolis La Cream Concentrate, which is a faithful of mine. For foundation, I went in with some of the Kat Von D Locket Foundation in the shade Light 41 Neutral. I used to use the Light 42, but I do tend to find that the Light 41 is more suitable for my skin tone. For colour correcting the discoloration underneath my eyes, I used some of the Cryol and Derma Colour Cream Concealer in the shade D1W. Then for pinpoint concealing or adding additional coverage in areas that required, I used Cryol and Derma Colour Concealer in the shade D7. 707. Then I set all of that through with some of Cryolan's Translucent Loose Powder in the shade TL3. I then stenciled out a shape for my eyebrows with some of Cryolan's Dermacolor Cream Concealer in the shade D40. And then to add depth and texture and create the illusion of hairs, I sketched in slightly with some of MAC Cosmetics Powder Eyeshadow in the shade Concrete. So all of the products I just mentioned, I'm sure for my regular viewers, are very familiar. But they're definitely products for which that I'm fond of and serve their purpose well. I'm now going to go in and begin my eyeshadow. So I first of all want to apply a transition colour to my socket and to the eyes. And today I'm going to be using a soft pink tone. This is the MAC Cosmetics Powder Blusher in the shade Dame, which is this absolutely beautiful soft pink colour. It's slightly cool pink, but it's marvellous. And the reason I'm using a blusher is because this is the colour I wanted to use. And also, with the MAC Cosmetics blushers, I do tend to find that they are quite finely milled. So when you begin applying them to the cheeks, first of all, with a little bit of pressure, you probably find you'll be thinking, goodness, I'm not really getting that much colour payoff. But then once you go back in with your brush and start to really build up the product, you find that you have probably applied too much. So they're really designed to be built up. So they're perfect for a blusher and they're also perfect for eyeshadow. So I'm first of all just tilting my head back just ever so slightly and then I've taken a little bit of it on a MAC 217 brush and as you can see that's barely any. I'm just applying that into the socket first of all. I'm just going to wash a little bit of it over the lid as I don't want it to be too definitively in the socket winging it slightly, keeping the overall shape more rounded. Pink is also a colour that can look absolutely beautiful on blue eyes and green eyes. Pink eyeshadow is one of those things you do have to be quite careful with though, because it has to be the right kind of pink, otherwise you might look as if you have a disease. Then I'm going in with a clean MAC 217 and just blending everything that we've applied. And then just building up the colour and just nestling the brush into the outer part of the socket and then winging it onto the eyelid and then swooshing it onto the eyelid and then going back in with our MAC 217 and just blending everything through. And then I'm just patting a little bit of that onto the eyelid itself. So I just really want to create a hue of colour over the eyelid first of all. And I'm just pulling the colour upwards and outwards just ever so slightly as we want to ensure and achieve seamlessness. And I shall always make the recommendation to either use the back of your hand to distribute the product on or to use a little face towel just so that you can take some of the product out of the brush. That ensures that it won't be so severe when you apply it first of all and it will be easier to blend making the eyeshadow easier to blend. Then I'm going in with a clean Zoa 228 brush 
And I'm just sweeping through all of that, just ensuring that all of our edges are seamless, as I want to create a really soft and beautiful look. So I have gone in and applied the same steps to the other eye. Now I'm going to apply a little bit of that Dame color on a Charles Fox 8146031 brush just to the underneath of the eye. And I'm taking it into the inner corner, but getting gradually thinner as I approach the inner corner. So the concentration of the color is quite thick at the outer part of the eye, but then it gets thinner as we get into the inner corner. And then just to ensure that everything is consistent, I'm connecting that round. So you take what's underneath and almost draw it round into your socket. Then going in with our 217 from before and just buffing all of those edges through. Now I'm going to go in and apply some of MAC Cosmetics Powder Eyeshadow in the shade Hawks, which is this beautiful, quite dark and quite dull pink. It's a little bit darker than MAC Cosmetics Powder Eyeshadow in the shade Omega, but it is definitely more on the berry pink plum side of things. And I'm going to be applying it on a Louise Young LY38A brush. And I'm tilting my head back just to reveal my socket. And I'm just applying that into the socket first of all, keeping it more so at the outer part of the eye. Just very softly build it up. I don't want to have too much definition with it. And then just go back in with your 217 from before and just blend all of those edges. And just make sure you blend it in so that everything is seamless. And as you can see, that just gives us additional definition. Then I'm going back in with our Charles Fox 8146031 brush for which that we used to apply the Dame blusher to the eyes. I'm now going to take some of that hoax color and just smoke it along the upper lash line, focusing the greatest concentration of the color at the outer corner. Just bringing it over just ever so slightly. Always go back in and just blend whatever you've applied just to ensure it's all flawless. So with the hoax color now buffed into both upper lash lines, I'm now going to go in with a pale tone. I think at this point the look can either start to go Halloween or it can be spring, and we want to keep it spring today. So the next product I'm going to go in with on the eyes is actually a cream eyeshadow, and this is one of the Maybelline Color Tattoo 24 Hour in the shade 65 Pink Gold. Very, very suiting. And it is this absolutely beautiful pink champagne color. What I'm doing first of all is just applying that to the lid with a MAC 239 brush. And I'm just using this to really create a glaze upon the eyes, first of all. And I'm taking that right into the inner corner on the eyelid. Then I'm going back in with our 217 from before and just buffing all of that through. Now, I think this color is absolutely beautiful. I would leave it just like that, but I'm actually going to go in and apply a little bit more shimmer on top of it in just a moment. Now, the pink gold is an absolutely beautiful tone. I do not know, however, if my camera will give it the full justice it deserves. It looks absolutely beautiful in person, however. And this product is one of my personal favorites when you just want to make your eyes look mesmerizing, but not apply a lot of makeup. Now, to amplify the shimmer and the sheen and the pink, I shall be taking some of MAC Cosmetics Powder eyeshadow in the shade Pink Freeze, which is this beautiful shimmery pink color. And then with the same 239 for which that I used to apply the 65 Pink Gold, I'm just flipping the brush round and I shall be using that to apply the Pink Freeze. And I'm only going to be applying it in the center of the eyes first of all. Just build it up just on the central area of the eye first. Now it's appearing a little bit more blue than I expected. I thought it would look quite pink, but it does have a slight blueness in it. It's not quite a duochrome, however. And then going back in with our MAC 217 from before and just softening all those edges. Now I'm going to go in and line the eyes just ever so slightly, just along the upper lash line with some of MAC Cosmetics Powder Eyeshadow in the shade Carbon, which is this absolutely beautiful fetching black. Some blacks are dashing blacks or refined blacks, but this one is a fetching black. And I'm going to make it a little bit fatter at the outer part of the eye, but I'm really just pushing that into the roots of the upper lashes. And then just smoking that black shade out just ever so slightly with our Charles Fox 8146031 brush. So by working product into the root of the eyelashes, it gives our eyes definition without harshness. This tip looks great on everybody, but certainly if you are somebody that is more mature, by applying a little bit of black product into your lash line, into the upper lash line and just smudging it in as much as you can. It just gives you definition without harshness, which I must confess, I think is marvelous. So the pink definitely adds freshness and brightness to the look and keeps it more spring. 
Now, because of the steps for which that we have taken on the upper part of the eye, I do find it is slightly overbearing to the underneath. So I'm going to go back in with MAC Cosmetics Powder Eyeshadow in the shade Hoax, for which that we used earlier. And I'm going to apply a little bit of that on a Charles Fox 814603 brush, which is a very precise little brush. I do find it to be scintillatingly marvelous. And I'm just adding a little bit more definition on the underneath. Just very faint amount of it. Concentrating most of that hoax color at the outer corner, working into the black just ever so slightly, and then softening all of that through. So it just gives us a little bit more definition on the underneath and doesn't allow the top to look as overbearing. So now for the waterline, I'm going to take a baby pink color, and this is Barry M Lip Liner in the shade 13. Now I've stated this before in several of my films, I do not like white on the waterline, certainly on my own waterline. I always think it looks really unflattering. Even an off-white or a very pale cream is a better option. I definitely recommend that you use either a pale cream or pale pink or use a flesh tone color irrespective of your ethnicity. I just always find that white pencil on the waterline, it always has this cold slight cheapness about it and it never really conceals the redness within the waterline so i will make the recommendation to try to go for a tone that is either a pale pink or a cream or a flesh tone as i just find it to be much more flattering than white so i'm going to go in and line my lower waterline with that first of all and i take it right into the inner corner and as you can see, just by taking that minor step, it just brightens up the eyes. Now I'm going to go in and curl my eyelashes with some of Inglot's eyelash curlers. Now I'm going to be going in with some of the Balm's What's Your Type mascara. I do tend to use this mascara all the time, certainly in all my films and on myself. I do have different mascaras in my kit for different purposes, but I do tend to find that this mascara performs very well on me. It is also very suiting for my own personal eyelashes and I'm just going to coat the eyelashes thoroughly. Now I'm going to go in with a MAC Cosmetics Lash Brush and I'm going to apply a little bit of mascara just to the lower eyelashes, but I'm not going to apply it too much as I do tend to find it always transfers on me. So I'm just really working that into the roots of the eyelashes first of all, as I just want the eyes to look a little bit more doll-like. Never be afraid to add a little bit more mascara. You could never have too much mascara on. So I'm very happy with the way that the eyes are appearing, but I want to add a little bit more definition to the top eyelashes. So I'm going to go in and apply some false corner eyelashes. And today I'm going to be using this set. I purchased them from an eBay seller, as I do tend to find that cheaper eyelashes are a lot more economic, as I dispose of my eyelashes straight after use. I don't like to keep them. I don't like all that gunkiness of glue and mascara must go in the bin. But I shall definitely leave the applicable link to this seller within the description of this film if you wish to purchase these. And of course, I shall be gluing them on with some duo adhesive. So with the eyes now complete, I'm now going to go in and contour, apply blusher and highlighter, and then of course, lips. But I want to first of all go in and apply contour. Now, because the look is quite full on, and as I said before, that when working with pink, particularly on my own skin, it can look either Halloween or it can look spring. So to keep it looking as spring as possible, I'm going to go in and use a more warm tone of contour today. Usually I use cold based colors to contour, but to keep it warm and incumbent with the colors that we see in spring and to keep the look overall looking spring, I'm going to use a warm tone. And to contour today, I'm going to be taking some of Kryolan's powder eyeshadow in the shade Sahara. And then I'm just stippling it on with an Inglot 38 SS brush. I want it to be quite soft, but very, very warm. One trick when contouring is to actually use a brush that's almost shaped like a ball. It's very domed. And then to take the color upward. Only work in small amounts, first of all, just so that you don't make any mistakes. And then I just stipple around the area. So that has given my cheeks definition, but because we've gone for a warm tone, it prevents it from looking too Halloween, it keeps it all looking warm and fresh. And I'm just going to add a little bit more just to warm it up further, buff it onto the cheekbone just ever so slightly so that we can ensure seamlessness and then performing the same steps on the other side. I definitely think that if your skin is super fair like my own or if it is super dark, 
contrasts need to look seamless. When they are too defined and harsh, it can look really unflattering on either of these skin tones, even though they are polar opposites. They are very similar regarding what looks most flattering on either. So by using a much more warm contour, it keeps the look looking spring. Now I'm going to be taking some of Ella Masca's powder blush in the shade Katie, which is this absolutely beautiful pastel pink colour. It's marvellous, very suiting for today's look. And I'm applying it on a Zova 126 brush. And I'm just stippling on quite a bit of it actually, and quite high. I want it to be quite high, just so that we create a really youthful, doll-like appearance. And I'm just stippling that colour exactly where I want it to be. Now, it may appear as if I'm applying it everywhere, but to create the illusion of really seamless skin, one must create a hue everywhere and create a gradient. So by applying a small amount of the colour everywhere, you create the grounds for a gradient. And then by applying a stronger concentration of the colour in the region for which that you want it to be the strongest, this follows through with your gradient. So even though I'm applying it everywhere, I'm applying the main focus of the colour to the apple of the cheek. For highlighter, I'm going to be taking some of the Becca Shimmering Skin Perfector Pressed in the shade Pearl, which is this absolutely beautiful off-white tone. Just ever so slightly on the yellow side of things, but absolutely gorgeous. And I'm applying that with a Wayne Goss number no. 2 brush. I'm just building it up in the areas I want to glow. This brush is like a kitten's paw. Now really just building up the sheen on the skin quite slowly, you will be able to see if I rotate within the light. It has added the most beautiful sheen to the skin. Tiny little bit of it on the chin, tiny, tiny amount of it above the lip, just to add light to that region. A very small amount of it at the top of the nose, tiny amount of it through the forehead, just a very faint amount of it, just to add a little bit of luminescence. Now I always like to apply a little bit of highlighter just at this point here. Now for lips, I'm going to go in with a lipstick that's actually quite bright, very similar to my own natural lip colour, slightly on the blue side of things, but very bright. But first of all, I'm going to go in and correct any asymmetry within my own natural lips and just enlarge in the shape in areas where required with MAC Cosmetics lip liner in the shade Boldly Bare. And there is no product on my lips currently, only a tiny amount of foundation that got on my lips when I was applying my foundation first of all. I'm just going to go straight in with that lip liner. And I'm not going to overdraw or enlarge the lips too much today, just enough to even them out. So with the lip liner now applied and the overall outline and the lip shape now corrected and evened out, I'm now going to go in with some of Charlotte Tilbury's lipstick in the shade Amazing Grace, which is this absolutely beautiful nude colour. It's more on the red side of things, but it's a pinky reddish nude colour, but it's absolutely beautiful, slightly cool toned, but very brightening, certainly on my own skin tone. This used to be the colour I used to wear all the time because it's very similar to my own natural lip colour. It's very useful when counteracting the oversaturation of brown within nude lip liners. I do tend to find that most nude lip liners have an overload and an excess of brown in them. So this colour is absolutely great for just counterbalancing the brownness because it doesn't actually change the depth of the lip liner. It just changes the hue. So you still have the shade at the same depth. It's no lighter or darker, but it just adjusts the colour ever so slightly. And to complete the look and just add a little bit of life into the lips so that they're not so mad, I'm going to be taking some of Elizabeth Arden 8 Hour Cream and I'm applying that almost as a gloss on a MAC 231 brush, just to the central areas of the lips because I find sometimes when lips are totally matte, they can look quite heavy in the face. So that more or less completes the look. I have had a lot of fun creating this look for you here today. It's a really soft, really easy, really feminine look. And I definitely think that pink can be an incredible color to work with. And I am very keen to hear what kind of films you'd like to see from me next. What kind of content, what sort of tutorials, what sorts of films would you like to see from me next? I'd very much like it if you could leave a comment with your content requests and lists. One, two, three, four. I would love that because I love to hear your feedback. I hope that you have found today's film to be either interesting, useful, helpful or beneficial. And once again, thank you so much for watching. And of course, take care. Bye.